The information depicted in this presentation is purely for informational purposes only. Please consult your healthcare professional before making any changes to your lifestyle or routine. This is not medical advice. Almost everyone's now talking about BDNF, which stands for Brain Derived Neurotrophic Factor. But what can be done to strategically increase BDNF? And what do you need to know about this growth factor in the brain. What's up guys, my name is Lucas and my mission is to bring you the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So please be sure to like this video, smash that subscribe button below. And if you have any questions or comments throughout the video, leave them below as I do my best to respond to each and every single one. So ultimately today I'm here to look at BDNF and specifically factors associated with either increasing BDNF or factors that can actually hinder and hurt BDNF. But first of all, we need to take a look at what is BDNF itself. We know that BDNF stands for brain derived neurotrophic factor and BDNF is actually quite similar to nerve growth factor, CNTF, GDNF, CDNF, and MANF, which are all proteins that can promote the growth and survival of neurons in the human brain. BDNF can also play an important role in neuronal survival and growth. It serves as a neurotransmitter modulator and participates in neuronal plasticity, which is absolutely essential for learning, memory, and mood. Before we get stuck into strategies and supplements and compounds to boost BDNF, we need to look at what actually lowers BDNF. So what things in our lifestyle are actually leading to a compromised production of BDNF? The first one is the consumption of processed food. This should be quite obvious for most of my listeners. Any sort of refined carbohydrate, foods or high sugar meals can actually directly impair the ability for the brain to create BDNF. In addition, we know that both acute and chronic stress can actually lead to disruptions in BDNF signaling. And also similar to this is severe sleep deprivation, which has also been shown to reduce BDNF production in humans. Following on, we also have high dose vitamin A, so retinol, vitamin A that you'd consume through your diet is very unlikely to lead to a reduced production of BDNF. What I'm specifically referring to is mega dosing vitamin A supplements. Also, we know that a low omega-3 intake can also disturb BDNF production. And this is similar to the ratio between omega-3s to omega-6s. So if one has a diet that favors the omega-6 ratio and has a diet predominantly rich in uh, omega-6s over omega-3s, this will you know, dampen the brain's ability to produce you know, BDNF as well. Heavy metal toxicity also plays a role here. Mercury, arsenic, cadmium, lead. I've spoken about some detox strategies on my Instagram. Specifically, these heavy metal toxicities can alter the gene transcription of BDNF in the brain, which can have some detrimental effects, not only for our generation, but also can have transgenerational effects. So it can affect generations beyond well in the future so definitely keep a lookout for heavy metal toxicity and i'll probably cover another video talking about how we can you know rapidly help to detoxify the body in addition bpa exposure similar to heavy metal toxicity can impair bdnf production high dose zinc supplementation so very very high dose zinc supplements so above 100 milligrams per day for longer than six to eight weeks can dampen BDNF production, and even social isolation or lockdown. Not only does social isolation slash lockdown uh, lead to schizophrenic type symptoms, but it can also lead to 
um, compromised BDNF production. So what are some lifestyle factors that can help to boost BDNF or increase BDNF? The first one we have here is aerobic and anaerobic exercise. So both aerobic exercise, which is uh, 70 to 85% of your max heart rate, low intensity, steady state, or just regular steady state cardio, such as running, cycling, swimming. These activities have been shown to increase BDNF and also anaerobic exercise, which such as weight training or explosive strength training can also lead to an increase in BDNF. So both types of exercise are actually beneficial to increase BDNF. In addition, we know that yoga training or general yoga practice can also help to raise BDNF levels in the brain. And similar to this, it can also increase anandamide, which is the body's endocannabinoid, so bliss molecule, which can help to, you know, obviously improve mood and build up that stress resilience. Sun exposure has also been shown to raise BDNF more powerfully than vitamin D supplements. That is why I'm more of a fan to get vitamin D or to build up your body's vitamin D levels through exposure to the sun versus supplements. But I understand many people live in dark cities or environments that make it difficult to get sun exposure. We also know that certain types of music can, or listening to music in general, can also help to boost BDNF. Caloric restriction or fasting, this is one of the mechanisms behind which, you know, many people say that they feel cognitively more switched on or they feel like they can get more work done when they're um, fasting. Not only does the fact that they're in ketosis contribute to cognitive function, but even being in a caloric deficit can also help to release BDNF in the brain. Funnily enough, sleep deprivation, acute sleep deprivation can also lead to a rise in BDNF, which is quite ironic. You'd think that not sleeping well would hinder brain function, but actually a single night of acute sleep deprivation can raise BDNF the following day, which is probably how some people feel quite energetic and lively and animated the day after they have a poor night's sleep. Maybe that's contributing. I'm not sure, but that's an interesting one. Now, here are some supplements that can increase BDNF. I'll be sure to link these down below if you wanna know where to purchase many of these compounds and supplements that I mentioned. So the first one is beta alanine. Beta alanine is well known in the bodybuilding community to help withstand anaerobic thresholds and also combat a buildup of lactic acid. It has a buffering effect on a buildup of hydrogen ions and fatigue. So beta alanine has been shown to not only increase GABA and dopamine, but also boost BDNF. Similar to the second last on this list, taurine. So taurine, I've spoken about on my channel before about the benefits of taurine. That has also been shown to increase BDNF expression. Similar, we have magnesium l 3 Magnesium l 3 is probably the most effective form of magnesium to cross the blood-brain barrier. Magnesium has been shown to restore BDNF levels. Next up, we have L-theanine. L-theanine has also been shown to raise BDNF. L-theanine is a constituent found from uh, green tea and matcha. I've spoken about theanine before. We also have quercetin, which is another supplement that's used to counteract hay fever and allergies. And then finally, we have caffeine. So caffeine has been shown to help with BDNF production as well. And it's probably the mechanism or one of the many mechanisms behind which chronic coffee exposure or chronic caffeine intake will lead to a reduction in Alzheimer's as well. So a huge benefit there. Here are some herbs that can increase BDNF. The first one we have on the list is curcumin. Curcumin is found within uh, turmeric. I'm sure many of you are familiar with curcumin. I'll probably dedicate a separate video to curcumin by itself, but curcumin has been shown to restore BDNF levels specifically following stress. Curcumin not only, you know, can cross the blood-brain barrier, but also has some heavy metal chelating properties and can actually help to chelate iron from the brain as well. We also have jugulin. So jugulin is known as gynostemma pentaphyllum. Done a video on jugulin talking about the benefits before, but 
This particular herb is known as Southern Ginseng and Jagulin, its gypenicides have been shown to help with BDNF production. Similar to Jagulin, we have Ginseng, so Panax Ginseng. All of these will be linked in the video description below if you wanna know where to purchase or if you wanna learn more about these herbs individually. Panax Ginseng is a well-known adaptogen and it has also been shown to improve BDNF levels and probably contributes to its ability to improve memory performance as well. Similarly, we have Bacopa monnieri, which is a classic nootropic, a very beginner nootropic to help with brain function, improve memory performance. Bacopa monnieri has also been shown to raise BDNF. We also have Magnolia bark. Magnolia bark is more of a sedative or relaxing herb. It can help with lowering cortisol. That has also been shown to raise BDNF. We also have Bupleurum extract. It goes by the name Chai Hu. I've learned about that from traditional Chinese medicine. Romania glutinosa is a very powerful yin restoring herb. So actually it can help to rebuild the adrenals and help with um, adrenal fatigue recovery. So Romania has some very impressive neurogenic qualities, which I'll explore soon. And then Ginkgo biloba has also been shown to improve BDNF production as well. The final point to note is that there is such thing as too much BDNF. You can see that in this study here, it was titled BDNF overexpression in the forebrain results in learning and memory impairments. And they noted that these results demonstrated that chronic BDNF overexpression in the central nervous system causes learning deficits and short-term memory impairments, both in spatial and instrumental learning tasks. So yet again, we see that too much of a good thing is actually real. Unfortunately, we don't have the technology to truly measure BDNF levels in the brain. I mean, we do, but it's very expensive to um, determine. So I guess all we can do is go by um, our general symptoms and how we feel and perform cognitively. Hopefully this video brought some new information into your life. Again, if you wanna know where to purchase many of the supplements and compounds that I mentioned, you'll see them linked down below. I'll like be dedicating another video to BDNF and all the other growth factors in the brain. So thanks everyone for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.